Hey YouTube, it's Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. In my last video, I was using a hand tap in conjunction with a lathe to do some threading on an internal part. Now if you watched that video, you would have noticed that I had to keep on advancing the quill to follow the tool as it traveled deeper into the piece. One of the ways that you can alleviate the need to keep uh, adjusting it so it keeps up with the tool is to have a spring-loaded center. And that's what I'm going to be making today. So if it's something it sounds like you might be interested in, stick around. So what I'm going to be making this out of today is a piece of three-quarter round uh, stainless. I'm not sure what kind of stainless it is, but I know it is stainless steel. It was outside in a scrapyard for quite a long time, and uh, there's very little corrosion on it whatsoever, no rust. So I'm going to feed this in through the side of the lathe. And the only reason I am using this is because it's what I've got laying around. I'm not going out and buying anything special. Use what you got. Now originally when I had thought about doing this, I had considered putting a taper on the stock so it would fit a Morse 2 taper. Now a Morse 2 taper, for those of you who don't know, um, lathe tail stocks, the shaft that's in the quill isn't straight. There's an angle to it. This particular angle is referred to as a Morse 2 taper. Um, it's not true with all lathes, so that just happens to be what my lathe has in the tailstock. But to make this taper, it is kind of complicated because you have to get your angle right. Now you could do that with the compound slide. You can actually change the um, position of the tailstock to create that angle in relation to the head. You spin it between centers. But um, it dawned on me that why go through that trouble when I can make something that will fit inside of the drill chuck. And if I make a spring-loaded center that will fit in the drill chuck, I can then use it in the milling machine and my drill press. So it's going to be a more versatile tool and it's going to be a lot easier to make. The first thing I'm going to do is take a cut along the face and true that up. My next step is to center drill a hole so it'll sit on the center for the tailstock. I'm going to come in with my center drill. The next step in this project is to reduce the size of what will become the shank. Now the shank's the bit that fits inside of the chuck. This is three quarter stock, this is a half inch uh, drill chuck, in other words I can fit something up to a half inch in diameter in here. Uh, I'm not going to go the full half inch, I'm going to cut it down by 50 thousandths. So I want to machine this to roughly 450 thousandths. This is not precision work. Being in a drill chuck it doesn't have to be. But to get myself close. I'm going to keep coming in here with dividers and seeing where I am on my stock thickness. For 450 thousandths, I'm just going to do uh, a little trick that a machinist told me a long time ago. I've set a pair of calipers to 450 thousandths. Now normally I would lay this down on the table, but I want you guys to see this on camera. All you do is you adjust the dividers until you are at 450 thousandths. And that's the easy way to set that up. The next measurement I need is the depth of this chuck because I want this shank to go all the way back and sit against the back wall of this drill chuck. And for that, I'm not even going to look at the digital readout on this. In fact, I could turn the thing off. I'll show you what I do. I'm just going to take it, I'm going to extend the depth gauge out, I'm going to put it to the bottom of the chuck, and I'm just going to slide it until it's closed. That's my measurement. Don't need to know what it is exactly because I'm going to come in here grab a marker and like I said this is not rocket sciences and I'm going to put a mark
And to set that mark, I'm just going to give the lathe a quick power up. Easy as that. Now I'm just going to start reducing that diameter. Tell you two, I'm going to stop for a second here, and I, I've been pulling chips off the machine. This is really a pleasure to work with. I don't know what alloy it is. I really wish I did because I'd love to get more of it. It's extremely forgiving. I'm not using the sharpest tool in the world and I'm getting really nice chips and it's it's just it's it feels like silk. I have come in with another bit so I could get rid of the shoulder that was forming from the, uh, the cutting tool I was using before. But this should be my last pass. So let's come in with the calipers and see how close I got to my goal, which was 450 thousandths. All right, I'm going to lock the slide so it doesn't move anymore. <laughs> 452 thousandths. Two thousandths of an inch. And I did that using these. Now granted, I used my digital tool to calibrate these but doing this by eye on a tool that doesn't have a digital readout, in fact, this, uh, this lathe is kind of primitive in today's standards, but I want to show you guys what's possible. Now, I could take a sandpaper and just kind of sand this thing down until it's its final tolerance. Two thousandths is not a lot of material to remove. But I just want to prove to you guys out there that if you come across some old machinery and you take the time to learn how to use it, you can get really, really good results. Next step, need to figure out how much of this spring I need to use. Uh, this is just a random spring I had laying around the garage, nothing special about it. Uh, I only need about an inch worth of compression, so uh, not quite sure what I'm going to cut off of this yet. I'm going to sit down at the desk with a tape measure, compress it, see what my measurements are and that'll determine how long I need to make the tool itself. So I figured I want to make the main part of the tool four and a half inches long. If I can get in here with the tape measure. Oh that's almost all the way to the chuck. All right, I'll do it this way. Uh, right about there. And like I said in the beginning of the video, this is definitely not a precision piece of tooling. I've gone ahead and made my mark. I'm going to take it out of the lathe and I'll cut it off the camera on the chop saw. All right, YouTube, the next thing I need to do is bore the hole where the spring is going to live. I've already center drilled it. And I'm going to take the spring here. I'm going to take my calipers again. Now this spring measures about 365 thousandths. But as the spring compresses, that diameter is going to expand. So I figure if I give it 420 thousandths, that'll be enough room to grow. The closest thing I have that I've been able to find is a drill bit that's about 415 thousandths. So five thou, for me, that's what I call acceptable tolerances.
I'm getting two different kinds of chips out of this. These are the ribbons that seem to be constantly coming out of one flute, and this is what's coming out of the other side, which leads me to believe that one side has been damaged, or the other side is just incredibly sharper than the other. So I'm going to stop what I'm doing, I'm going to take the time to redress this drill bit. I'm going to do something that you may be surprised at. I am going to uh, complain just a little bit about the Atlas lathe, and it's not uh, an exclusive problem to an Atlas lathe. In fact, it's not really a problem at all, depending on what you're doing with the machine. I need to drill a four inch deep hole in this material. The quill, the piece that moves back and forth when the tailstock is locked to the, uh, to the ways, only travels out about two and a half inches before you start getting some play in there. And I don't know if that's true with all Atlas lathes, but I know that this one, the, uh, the quill will disengage from the drive screw at about two and three quarter inches. So that means I only have about two and a half inches of reliable travel going in this direction. I want to drill a four inch deep hole. So that means I have to advance the tailstock up and have the drill bit inside the material, then start the lathe and then proceed to move the quill forward. That in itself isn't too much of a hassle, but what you have to be aware of is sometimes you need to back the drill bit all the way out to clear the chips out of the hole which means you'll find yourself repeatedly moving the tailstock back and forth, back and forth, tightening, loosing, t it's just... Uh, it makes videos longer than they should be. But I'm not showing you the entire process of boring out this hole because it is going to take me the better part of 30 minutes. Victory! While I've got the piece still in the chuck, I'm going to come in and just put a slight chamfer on that edge. So I'm ready to start making my next piece. Uh, I already straightened the face on this and center drilled it and it's all set up ready to machine. Uh, I had to wait for this piece to cool completely. When I first measured the internal bore uh, on my calipers, I was getting 420 thousandths. When I let it cool off and it returned to room temperature, I'm getting 417 thousandths. So there's a little bit of a variable because of the heat, but that happens, it's metal. Metal expands and contracts just like most other things on the planet. So what I did is I set my calipers once again to 417 thou, and I matched that to my dividers. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spin about six inches of this down to approximately 417 thou. So this is the moment of truth. We'll see how close I am to 417 thousandths. Um, this should be the last pass if I did all my math right. Come on, get on there. <clears throat> Off by 2 thou again. Like I said, it's not precision work, doesn't need to be, but you can get pretty damn close with one of these old lathes. Not bad. So from here I'm going to check the spring compression. Okay, that's all the way out. Not bad. So I'll mark this up here somewhere. And that'll be where I cut it off. Alright, that's taken care of. Next step is to come in and put the center point on. And I've changed my cutter in the lathe. 
to the appropriate angle. I don't know YouTube, if it's not one thing, it's another. Whoever ground this tool, ground some material off the top and lowered the cutting edge so it wasn't centered with the chuck anymore. I don't know who would have done that or what it would have been used for, but um, let me grab a glove because this is hot now. So I had to take a shim and put a shim under the tool bit to make up the difference. And then finally, I was able to get a halfway decent cut. Now what I need to do is mill a slot in here and put a set screw so this piece doesn't come off and it'll also uh, limit the travel because I don't need that much compression. Okay YouTube, so I'm at the point where I'm ready to assemble. Now I did do a couple of things off camera. Uh, I went back in and put a slight chamfer on each one of these edges because uh, I had forgotten to do that and they were rather sharp. Uh, the only other thing that I did, I had to drill a cross hole in this piece fairly close to the end and I threaded it for a 1032 uh, Allen head machine screw. And I didn't film that again because if you have seen my channel for any number of uh, months now, if you've been a subscriber, you've all seen me drill through holes and thread things. So what I'm going to do to assemble this is take the main part, I'm going to drop the spring right down the barrel. I'm going to put the center on top of the spring, hold it straight up and down and push and take the Allen screw. And that's it. She's assembled. Spring loaded center. Well, YouTube, that brings me to the end of another video. If you've made it this far, thank you once again for watching. Uh, if you're a new subscriber, thank you for joining the channel. Please feel free to comment on the video or offer suggestions of videos that you might like to see in the future. Uh, I am getting to the point where the software and my camera issues are slowly disappearing and my videos are becoming a bit better quality from a visual standpoint. But um, I'm very grateful for those of you who have hung out me through what I will call the dark days of video recording. And uh, I'm looking forward to many, many more videos in the future. It's just a matter of time and editing and patience. And I'd like to thank you once again for your patience, for bearing with me for so long. This has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals. I will see you all again soon.